bad language outside Lizzie's. But Lizzie Lockett, this one is. It took a lot upset Lizzie Lockett next door but one to us. But this particular instance had really set her off. Hilda asked me all that shop town may abide it. I says I stood. I says, heard what? Lizzie Lockett's going to have police on out bigot. I says, why? What's happened? Hilda says, well, last Wednesday afternoon, Lizzie got some women's organisation members dying for coffee. And they went and sitting in front room drinking coffee and talking about baking bread. And over sudden, it says this vile language started floating in through the window. <laughs> Well, Lizzie reckoned it was somebody out in the street standing under the gas lamp and they wanted a eighth churn in it tight. It wasn't just ordinary swearing, it was worse than that, a lot worse. It was pit language, fish market language and bloody docker's language all held into one. <laughs> With a bit more added than host. Good measure. I reckon says Judy Parker Jarvis fainted. And I swear as blind as it was out piggot. I says it's only him in Dolan North Staffordshire's could cost like that. I says any road has got police on it. I thought poor old Lizzie. Well, fortunately, it didn't happen very often as they met at Lizzie's, but when they did, I usually managed to get purse out of the road, shift his teeth off mantel shelf, <laughs> put a reasonable show on the nose. It seemed a cruel stroke of fate as old Grandad Piggott should have a crossing session under the gas lamp that very afternoon. Lizzie had got no doubt what I was going to do. Face like thunder had got when my mother said her in the butchers. So I've got him shifted. You can't stand it out, Tom. I oh, know it was him under that gas lamp, I says. This would be a lovely neighbourhood if it wanted for his filthy gob. <laughs> I says it's every hour of the day with him. First thing in the morning, he goes banging and swearing down to the lavatory. I says it's heaven help anybody as gets in his road. <laughs> I says then he's churning his language eye to two, two and three o'clock in the morning they're on. My empire's gonna go slight for him. Now nah, this lot. Oh no, I says. He's gone to fur this time. I says, I gets a bit of ale inside him and up goes his volume knob. Rubbish, I is. <laughs> no, but rubbish. <laughs> I was real better, was Lizzie. Oh, when Bobby first knocked on old Grandad's door, they took panic. I says, one of my, the host. I never went nowhere near that building site. I says, and as regards any tales, never said none. <laughs> There's been a complaint about you emitting abusive and obscene language in a public place, thereby liable to cause a breach of the peace. Well, old grandad like stunned at first. Then I thought, fast. I says, look, it wanna me. It met a sandy like me, but it wanna. I says, my mate Billy Drummond bets on us, he's just say. And I had a bad run yesterday afternoon. I's a bit fast tempered, drummer is. <laughs> I don't think what he says. Bobby says, it was not yesterday afternoon, it was Wednesday. I like street at this, Bobby. I says, it couldn't have been me, then I was in bed, bad. They could text me messes. <laughs> Oh dear Wednesday, I was bad. But Bobby had gone. Well, how'd Grandad come round our eyes? I says, it's all right, isn't it? The minute somebody does something round here, everybody says it's me. <laughs> oh, says they're not usually wrong, neither are they. <laughs> well, they were just about charge out Grandad Piggott with this offence. And I happened by and done robbing this night. And somebody, knew somebody else, has happened to work for the gas board. And this chap was on the club. So our granddad says, why is he on the club? You know, it's just in conversation, like. This bloke says, well, his mate was sealing a crack in a gas lamp. And he dropped red hot molten lead down his shirt neck. That's how he used to do it, the gas lamp. I was at the bottom of the ladder, does say. Well, all of a sudden, something clicked. And it took out granddad Piggott till dinner time next day, tracked this bloke down. I says, listen, bad neck or no bad neck, they coming down to the police station with me. Of course, this bloke didn't know as it was up to say, so of course I made a statement that afternoon. And his statement read like this. I was holding the ladder for Mr. Smith, and I remember feeling excruciating pain, and I said, excuse me, Mr. Smith, you were dropping red hot lead down my neck. <laughs> Will you please try to be more careful? <laughs> Our granddad says to this Bobby, ah, I says, I suppose that's what you'd see if somebody dropped red hot lead down their shirt neck, is it? <laughs> so he took him out in the wash. It won't out, Grandad, after all. Well, they wouldn't have tell him who'd complained, but they could have blamed Leslie Lockett for thinking it was him. If you heard a bark in our straight, you knew there was a dog a bite. If you heard bad language, you knew there's how Grandad Piggott was a bite. It was as easy as that. <laughs> <laughs>